Patrick and Terence Casey were a pair of brothers from San Francisco who spent the years 1916 to circa 1924 contributing to various pulp magazines, such as All Story Weekly, Top Notch Magazine, and Adventure. Little is known of Patrick, aside from him being born in 1893, working on newspapers, and supposedly having, to quote, an adventurous early life. He died in Sausalito in California in 1941. Of Terence Casey, I could not find any information at all, beyond him having co-written every one of Patrick's stories and serials. Their fiction was published in book form four times, the very first being today's subject, the 1916 the Straying Story of William Hyde, which was serialized a few months prior in Adventure magazine. Interestingly, in 2010, Off Trail Publications collected five of their pulp stories and published them under the title Hobo Stories, which seems to be the first time since 1924 that any of their work got into print. The Straying Story of William Hyde is probably the most well-known of their works. The novel begins with the narrator, Colum Kildare, of the SS Fairhaven, narrating how in Honolulu his ship saved William Hyde, a ragged, swindling Shell and Pea man from a mob of his marks. Below deck, Hyde eventually confesses his story. Prior to this, he had spent six months on the Kauai plantations, the company fixing it such that despite his wages, his gambling attitude making it so that he would get deeper and deeper in debt with the company in order to stop him from leaving Kauai and having to work on the plantations indefinitely. He then tells Kildare of the sacred singing stones of Jaran Bato, the Golden Women, and the Green Green God, a local superstition coming out of Malaya but being in evidence in Singapore and even far off Seychelles. The Punan of Borneo believe the stones contain the souls of men who have not been, crooning horribly at their fate. Hyde had become interested in finding the sacred city due to the supposed abundance of precious stones in evidence, but none of the local natives would aid him to find it or enter its evidence willingly. Now Hyde found himself in Malaya due to him being an orchid hunter. He first suspects he might be near the sacred city when he arrives at an old fortress which held out for nearly two years against the Dutch invasion and was commanded by the famous Diak chief Soropati. Near the fortress, he notices a nearby extinguished volcano. Leaving his Diaga guides, he follows a nearby river and makes his way through a secret tunnel into the Jalan Bato, hidden deep within the volcano's crater. He comes to a city surrounded by a field of singing stones that make odd noises when struck by the heat and is soon brought face to face to Belufi Meapuapua, the queen or Orlok Radenajo of the Punan. His red hair makes the queen and the locals suspect him of being the man-child of Genghis Khan, prophesied to bring forth the sending of the sword, which is not good news for the locals because the population claims descent from a troop of Genghis Khan's soldiers, ruled by the Khan's female descendants, the Golden Women, who all expect nothing less than complete extermination once the Khan's heir should find them. However, Hyde also manages to win the Queen's heart, as well as the ire of a local priestess and her murderous pet orangutan. And because of this, and his desire to use the treasures found in the Jaran Bateau to become a rich man, he eventually finds himself once again in the outside world, but at a terrible price. The story is interesting with a bittersweet ending, but the romance could have been fleshed out a bit more, and the action scenes aren't bad, if not really frequent. I definitely read worse Lost Rates fiction before.